So it's time for another gardening week and I'm in the kitchen garden for a change and working basically through all the beds trying to figure out if I can squeeze stuff in before the main crops. So in this case this bed's going to be Colette's in early May. Uh, I always say 10th of May but it doesn't really matter. And uh, so I think I've got plenty of time to get quite a nice crop of pea shoots out this bed. So that's what I'm popping in at the moment. And uh, yeah, I'm doing that for all of the beds. Not a lot of things really that you can get to harvest um, by May. But yeah, there's a few options. And then the other Thing that I'm going to be doing today is pop in, fill in some of my containers. So those containers are not going to be used until the peppers go in them and that tends to happen in June so that gives me a much better growing opportunity and so I'm going to put all sort of loads and loads of different types of brassicas in there and I'll show you those in a minute. So I've had these spare brassicas um, just like kind of kicking around in the greenhouse. I don't have space for them anymore. So I've got some red cabbages here, pentler big kale here, savoy cabbages here, and uh, Brussels sprouts for leaves there. So I'm going to tidy all of these up and, as I said, plant them in containers. So those are looking a lot nicer. And I won't actually get... Uh, any Brussels sprouts off these of course you know because you're never going to get Brussels sprouts in June um, by the beginning of June off these plants but I've got lots of others already planted out on the allotment which will give me Brussels sprouts in summer um, but I think these will work quite nicely just to give me a bit of a, a bonus leaf harvest I don't have a huge amount of brassicas this year um, not leafy ones anyway so any that I, any that I can get extra is going to be a really nice bonus for me so I think these little Brussels sprouts look really nice um, and now I'm going to do some little savoys now obviously I'm not going to get savoy cabbages so just like the Brussels sprouts you know, you've got to accept your limitations with such a short time window. But I think I'm going to get lots of loose leaf savoy leaves. Um, so I'm going to plant them really close. I mean, look at those Brussels sprouts. You know, I've got, I don't know, what have I got? Three, six Brussels sprouts in that pot. You know, that is <laughs> pretty tight spacing. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really matter you know when you're growing for leaves you can pack stuff in especially if you don't need the plants to be healthy for a long period of time just pop them in get as many in as you can and uh, yeah just take your short harvest window and be thankful for it so I'm saving one of these savoys the best looking one which isn't here it's down there still um, and I'm going to use i'm going to grow that one on to maturity but as i said these are just a bit of a bonus i'm gonna to have to fill this pot up a little bit there um yeah i think this is going to look really nice a bit a bit crazy but uh Nice nonetheless, nice little experiment. So these Pentland Brig, they don't really need any cleanup. They're looking lovely as they are. I mean, I could already take quite a good leaf harvest off these uh, right now. So yeah, I'm gonna scatter these around. So I'm really, I'm really quite happy with this. I might prove, might prove wrong um, and uh, when I come back from holiday I might find that basically you've got nothing left and it's all been blown away in the wind but uh, 
No, I don't know. I think uh, there's a good chance I'll get a few leaves off this uh, rather than just having empty pots all through spring. So we have a fair few issues with cats here. Um, and so I tend to put bird netting on any kind of exposed beds that look particularly tempting. Um, but it's getting to the point now where I really need to take this bird netting off, otherwise I won't be able to get it off uh, the garlics. So uh, yeah, I'll take that off and we'll give it a bit of a weed and I'll have a look at the garlic. Yeah, that garlic's not looking too bad. Unfortunately, I've got one garlic bulb missing here, which just really wrecks the symmetry of the bed. So I'm gonna have to, I can't cope with that. So I'm gonna have to transplant one of my green garlic plants. Not too many weeds actually here. It's had a nice mulch of mushroom compost on this bed. This is a new bed, created it last year, uh, just before planting the garlic. So yeah, it should have a lot of nutrition in it. And I did give the garlic a ridiculous amount of space. I don't really know why I decided to do that. <laughs> um, and I might regret it now, but uh, the die is cast, so I'll just have to live with it and see it as an experiment in growing big garlic. <laughs> so I thought I'd just quickly take it in the greenhouse just to show you that I have started bringing the peppers and the tomatoes and some more peppers there into the greenhouse now on nice sunny days just to get them acclimatized to this environment but also just to get them to enjoy the full intensity of the spring sunshine and a little bit more air movement than they get in the conservatory they're still going back in the conservatory uh, late afternoon and not coming in here until sort of 10 o'clock in the morning something like that but uh, yeah, I think it just helps them to have their leaves blown around a little bit, makes them a bit stockier plants. So now I'm in the front garden, what we call the potager, and just got these few spare shallots. So I'm just gonna pop those in, scattered around in this little area here. And once we've finished harvesting these uh, in July, we'll put some winter leeks in here, I think. So I absolutely love the way that shallots look in a garden, especially an ornamental garden like this. Uh, I think they're going to look really lovely. Very happy with those. And we popped a few lettuce out uh, underneath this Envirotect cover. Um, they're looking okay. We put them out a few days ago. And we've got like, these little gnomes, which are holding the Envirotect above the level of the lettuce. So I'm back in the polytunnel and I'm kind of continuing my race to get the whole of the polytunnel kind of replanted really by the middle of March so I can get another full harvest out of it uh, before I put in the summer crops. So I'm just going to take these little scrappy lettuces out and I'm just chopping them off at the base, basically with my knife. And uh, there's a few leaves on them that are worth saving, not many. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're, as I say, they're, they're worth they're worth doing. Um, they're, they're, so they were worth leaving in. But now I've got these really lovely lettuces here. Uh, to put in. So these are canasta, these are my favourite summer variety. So uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting these in. And what I tend to do is just actually just dig exactly where the lettuces were previously, push the roots down and plant into the same holes, which I know is against all <laughs> the rules of um, rotations and all of that sort of thing. But the way I figure it is that this is a time when the plants are super vigorous, so they're not going to succumb, succumb to any diseases. Um, the ground, the sort of microbiome of the ground is nicely adapted to lettuce. Um, you know, the roots are pre sort of populated with 
uh, mycorrhizal relationships and all of that sort of thing of the old lettuce so if I push them down they're out of the way plant the next one the new lettuces will grow the roots through the old roots um, and uh, and they should thrive but well, that's my theory and so that's what I always do it seems to work but I wouldn't do that in winter so much uh, because of the risk of uh, mildew you know the, the sort of uh, fungal spores associated with um, <coughs> stem rot being sort of propagated from one generation of lettuce to the next so there won't be lettuce in here uh, before I replant there'll be probably Asian greens or something like that so you know that's uh, I do kind of try and pay a little bit of attention to these sort of issues uh, when we're going into winter when the plants are going to be weaker much more likely to succumb to disease and I probably wouldn't also do this if there was a lot of pests around but right now no real signs of green fly or anything like that so yeah I can just pop these in here this little patch here that's left uh, are going to be saved for Asian greens and just got a few other bits of planting that I'm going to do today and then I'll just take you through the uh, the rough planting scheme so <laughs> these are lovely aren't they gorgeous little lettuces those uh, they're such a crispy leaf as well they're kind of almost like an iceberg uh, these canasta and uh, yeah they just really thrive in the warm weather so really looking forward to eating these and I have got some more a bit further on than this but uh, yeah always an exciting day when I'm planting caster there we go and I've also just gone through this bed here these lettuces and just removed any leaves that are of eating quality as I said, I, these are only going to last me two weeks. I'm a bit short of lettuce, so I don't want to just take them out just for the sake of it because the Asian greens aren't ready to go in. And I've got a nice little tub of lettuce as well. So one of the other things I want to do is uh, put some of these salad onions in. So I'm a bit short of salad onions. And so I'm sort of scattering them all over the place, hopefully that they come in kind of succession. And so I'm gonna put some in between all these lettuces and hopefully these will come first. Then the ones that I've just put in the cold frame will come second. And the ones that go outside will come third. So hopefully I'll get a reasonable uh, crop of salad onions. And I'm just gonna pop them in, uh, as I said, on these centers. And they haven't got very long to grow, but I think I think they'll be all right. I think it'll give me a good crop in May. I haven't planted all these lettuces particularly evenly, unfortunately, but some of them are okay. <coughs> some people ask me what these uh, little slabs are for. They're for my feet when I'm harvesting or weeding or planting or whatever on these beds I can't really get I can't reach to the back of them without having somewhere to put my feet so I'm gonna get a good few weeks supply of salad onions in here these look as though they could do with a bit of a better water but they're not they're not too bad I did snip the tops off these because I started these back in uh, January uh, not enough light really for them so they uh, they got a little bit leggy so I just snip the snip the tops off and they're nice and stocky little plants now doesn't do them any harm well doesn't do them much harm I think that with main crop onions if you snip the tops off the uh, the research is a bit variable but it seems to indicate that the yield is slightly reduced although the plants sometimes look a bit stronger and neater so 
I don't think as a home gardener it really makes much difference. If you have got leggy plants then you can snip the tops off if you won't ruin your crop or anything like that. But you might the yield might drop by say five or ten percent, which you know matters to a farmer. It doesn't really matter to us. And one of the advantages for me of having all these salad onions in here is it just looks really nice. Um, it really enhances the aesthetics of a of a lettuce bed. I do normally like my salad onions to be a bit bigger when I'm into planting them. Um, maybe twice the size of this, so maybe three or four weeks older. Um, just so that they can easily outcompete the lettuce. Whereas what I'm going to find in here now is that it really is going to be a race for these salad onions to grow big enough. And I'm going to have to keep on top of harvesting these lettuce so that they don't overpower them when they're young. Once they get well established and they're sort of up here, they, you know, they can grow in between the lettuce, no problem. But when they're little, they need a little bit of help. This bed's where I'm putting my Brussels uh, next year, this year rather, and so they'll be going out in middle May. So there's plenty of time for these salad onions to get harvested before the Brussels kind of outgrow the bed uh, or outcompete them. You know, that'll be middle of June or something like that, and these will definitely have been eaten by then. That's the beauty of using the edges of beds, you know, but that's what we do for garlic and all that sort of thing, you know, that gets in the way um, of your main crop plantings. And I'm not going to put fleece over these. I know that means they'll struggle a bit to really get going. Um, but it's quite mild at, at the moment. Um, it's a bit windy, but the wind's going to die down later on today. Um, I think they'll be okay. And as I say, the, the, these don't really need to come on quickly because I've got these others in the polytunnel. So as so long as these are, are ready, you know, within a sort of month of those uh, in the polytunnel, then that's fine. So if they get knocked back for by a few weeks, it's not a problem. And so just finishing off in the polytunnel, you can see the cauliflowers and the calabrese all doing really nicely. And so this bed won't get replanted until June because this is where the uh, cucumbers, uh, the main crop courgettes and the melons are going. And so I'm going to put, once I've taken these radish out, I'm going to put celery in little clumps all the way down here. So I think I can get sort of five or six clumps of celery in there. And uh, they can stay in that bed then when the melons and courgettes go in. So uh, I think that'll be quite nice. Broad beans are coming on well. I've got loads of flowers on those. No beans yet, but you know, it won't be long. And then obviously I've got beetroot all the way around the outsides of these beds. That's going to stay in for ages, uh, sort of well into summer. Uh, down the middle there, so down the edge rather, that's where the tomatoes are going to go. And then down the middle here, that's where my French beans, dwarf French beans are going to go all the way down there. So uh, that's pretty much it. So this is an exciting day for me today because I'm sowing all of my main crop brassicas and uh, you know so these are the ones that are going to grow all the way through summer and probably some of them will grow all the way year round and I've got breast Brussels sprouts they're the ones that are going to go in the kitchen garden where I don't have club root crisp Brussels sprouts they're the ones that are going to go on the allotment where I do have club root uh, black magic kale which I think is the best of the sort of Tuscan kales uh, red Ladero, which is a red cabbage that's, again, uh, resistant to club root. 
for the allotment and red drum head for the kitchen garden where we don't need it. Uh, graffiti, which is the purple cauliflower, beautiful. Colette's, two different seed suppliers, Premier Inn and Thompson's. I absolutely love Colette's, as everybody knows, and uh, I've got loads of them outside, actually. I'm just looking at them now when I look at the camera. And, uh, yeah, they're looking beautiful. Pentland Brig Kale, which I've got in the kitchen garden at the moment, is doing really nicely. And I'll do multiple successions of that, as well as multiple successions of Scarlet, uh, which is another kale, but as the name suggests, it's a red one. And Cadet, which is a green curly kale. And I've got quite a bit of that in the kitchen garden at the front of the house. And Calabrese uh, Marathon. So quite a nice selection there. That will keep us uh, well fed through summer. And I've got my tumbler tomatoes, which are the ones that are going to go in containers in the um, polytunnel. I've already got the ones that are going to go in hanging baskets in the greenhouse. They're big plants now, that sort of size. And Black Moon, which are some cordons that I'm trying. I'm going to try those early in the greenhouse. I haven't even started my uh, main crop tomatoes yet. And Minnesota Midget, which is my early melon. And then Zephyr Courgette. And I actually chitted these. So you can see that they're coming on quite nicely. You just have to be just a little bit careful when you drop those in, not to damage the root. And uh, I've got four of those. So that kind of shows you, you know, why the suggestion is when you're sowing these, is you always sow them pointy end down because that's where the root's going to come out. But actually, it doesn't really matter. They figure it out on their own. And so that's it. So lovely. I'm really happy to have got those done. So that's me done for the week. I'm just finishing off uh, me, with my potatoes. I'm going to do a separate harvest video for you for next week because it's the March harvest. And uh, yeah, so I've got all my potatoes down there. First three weeks of harvest. Uh, so that'll sort of last us until the middle of May. Got my next batch of potatoes coming along here. Got my next batch that's just ready to be uh, planted into their final tubs. They're looking pretty good. And uh, yeah, and I've just moved the rest into the house because it's a bit cold to get them started in this greenhouse. So they kind of stalled a little bit, took about, about two weeks on and they're still only just about breaking surface. So I think just a few days in the house and they'll be shooting up. And uh, of course, once they're actually growing, they just keep on growing uh, even in the cooler weather. So yeah, my name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.